What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to Vlogmas. I do want to say a special thank you to all of the new subscribers. The video performances are doing really well. You guys are really engaged in the content I'm putting out. So thank you so much for watching the videos, for subscribing to the channel. Go ahead and do that now before this video kicks off. Also ring the notification bell. That way you know every time I post for Vlogmas. What I've been doing is uploading around 8 p.m. Central Time because I try to shoot these in the morning at my office get my work done and then edit them in the afternoon then post for you guys so be expecting some new content every day from now until Christmas around 8 p.m. Central Time what I'm gonna do on Sundays is do a live stream and on Saturdays I'm going to do a question and answer series just so it makes it a little bit easier for me to enjoy my weekends and work during my weekends because as we all know that's when DJs are the busiest so be looking for a live stream on Sundays and a Q&A session on Saturdays. While we're on the subject of Q&As, go ahead and follow me on Instagram at DJ Woopig is where you can find me. On Friday, I'll put a post up asking you to ask me some questions and I'll put up the answers in that video on Saturdays. So if you're not already, go ahead and subscribe to me on Instagram. You can find me all across social media. Just search for DJ Woopig. If you've got any questions, you can send me an email at DJ woopig at gmail.com that way I can get back to you if it's not something that you feel like you want to leave down in the comment section below so as we're getting into this vlogmas into the groove of things what I want you guys to do in the comment section is leave me some suggestions about what you want to see now yesterday I put up a poll on my community tab asking what you guys wanted to see gave you three options and I'm gonna shoot a video over all three of those but I could always use some help on some ideas on today's video we're gonna talk about the complete DJ rig that I take out to virtually every wedding it's a part of what I call my classic package and it's essentially just the bare bones minimum DJ setup that typically involves two speakers my uh, DDJ SZ controller my coffin and that's really about it there are some variables in there for different venues or different upsells that I will show you but today we're just gonna dive into the bare minimum Now one thing that you won't see in today's video that you typically see in any wedding classic package that I sell is my dance floor lighting. I use the American DJ Dots T-PAR system for just about all of my weddings in that classic package. The reason for that being is I like to use a, a wash system to really blow out the dance floor instead of something like a effects light that only gives off little dots and laser beams and stuff like that to a very specific area. Um, I just don't like them all that much and I find that in when you look back on the wedding pictures, things aren't as clear. Um, you have flashes from photographers going off all nights and I found that the wash system gives me the best bang for the buck because you can change colors, you can do chase paint, patterns um, and you don't have the flicker and all that stuff that uh, to me looks a little tacky there are a few exceptions I do have some of these derby style lights that I bought on Amazon now they're not an American DJ or a Chave brand this is made by a company called Adkins now I didn't spend much money on these simply because I don't use them but maybe uh, 10 or 12 times a year and the only time I try to use them is for kid parties when I send out other DJs that are here on staff I send them with these because kids want to be in the dark and they want a lot of flash and trash lighting when you get into something like a elegant wedding it just doesn't fit in now there are exceptions especially this past weekend where the bride specifically requested an a lighting effect like this she was at a wedding of one of her friends I think a month or two ago and she asked me what kind of lighting we had in the package I explained it to her I showed her some pictures of it and she said well do you have anything that's got a little bit more uh, a little bit more flash it's got colorful you know dots and things of that nature I instantly knew what she was talking about so you know I, I gave her the pros and cons but ultimately she ended up deciding
deciding on the Derby system. Now, you won't see that in today's video because I have my DOTS T-PAR systems rented out. Uh, but typically, it's just the light on a T-PAR. It sits behind the DJ booth. If I'm not using that, I'll clip these underneath the speakers. And that's the lighting package that we send out for 90% of our classic package weddings. Now, keep in mind, this isn't going to be as nice or as elegant as, say, a banquet hall. But uh, it's all the same, whether you're setting up in a shop like I'm doing today or whether you're out on the job, uh, this setup is going to be the same regardless. Now side note, in my contracts I do have the specifications of the size of area that I need. I tell them typically I need about a 10 square foot radius which is plenty of room for most DJ setups. For the bigger setups I up the space just so I have more room to work with so I can spread things out and not make it look as crammed for our big setup. I tell them I need uh, almost a whole wall depending on the size of the venue, but everything starts with the table We'll put the coffin on top of it Now the coffin goes on the table if you haven't already checked out the video I did a couple days ago on my coffin setup with along with putting the new sure antennas on there Be sure to check that out coffin goes on the table and then uh, we'll set up some speakers Next up we have the speaker stands by Ultimate Support. The one thing that I really like about Ultimate Support as opposed to a lot of the other speaker stand manufacturers out there is these dudes go up crazy high and really getting the sound at the, uh, at the guest's head level or even above is what makes these things awesome. Um, having the sound above their head means you're not going to be killing them with the harsh highs or maybe the deep lows if they're standing right there next to the speaker. This is especially effective if you've got older guests in front or next to your DJ booth which seems to be the common spot for placement. So I recommend these guys. Of course you can do whatever you want to. The one thing I will say is Spend some good money on some speaker stands. That way you don't have your investment of a thousand, fifteen hundred bucks or so falling on the ground. You want something that's super steady and super stable. Now if you want your speaker stands to match up perfectly, which you should always want to do, is match these up before you set your other one up. So what I like to do is I like to get my speaker stand and match them up to the next one. Make sure the corner of the feet are both touching and that way you know you've got the same spread across both planes. So once you have your table with your DJ controller set up and your speaker stands, the next step of course are the speakers themselves. That being said, I use a different speaker for a different room. If I'm in a medium sized room, I'll use the Electro Voice EKX 15Ps. If I'm in a small room, I'll go for the 12 inch version. If I'm in a large room, I'll go with the 12 inch version coupled with the 18 inch subwoofer. All the subs that I have are 18 inches. I feel like the 12 pairs best with the 18. I never couple a 15 inch subwoofer with a 15 inch main because I feel like there could be some cancellation issues or the speakers just fighting against themselves. I know uh, sometimes you might run into some phase and cancellation issues depending on your speaker placement so I try to get them as far apart as possible at least 10 to 12 feet apart or better if possible. But I want Now once we get our speaker set, it's finally time to dive into our jump box. If you haven't seen what I keep in this case, be sure to check out the jump box video. This box I carry with me to every single gig I go to. It doesn't matter if it's big or small, it contains all of the essentials I need to perform at a show. Now my cable of choice for getting audio and power to my speaker is one of these combined cables. This one here is made by a company called Elite Core, located right here in Arkansas, actually right up the road from me. Now on the jump box video some of you guys were concerned with having noise travel down the audio cable since it's so close to the power. I can assure you I've ran this a hundred times or better more using these cables and I've never had an issue. If you have noise coming down your line 
chances are it's something to do with the power you're getting in. That's where something like a power tester comes in to make sure it's adequate power and it's clean power that you're getting to your mixer in the first place. If you're getting noise, I would suggest try a different outlet, run an extension cable somewhere else, but this, this cable here, shouldn't give you any issues whatsoever. Now we're just a few steps away from being finished. Before we actually wrap it up though, I like to take the cable from the speaker to the mixer and tape it down along the back side. That way no one sees this slack except somebody that's behind the speakers and nine times out of 10, nobody's behind there anyway. It doesn't take much tape, but don't be afraid to use as much as you need to get the job done. Once you get to the bottom of your speaker stand, what I like to do is take the excess, throw it over to your table and then tape down a straight flat line to your table. That way you're not all snaked out. Something like that just doesn't look good. should look a lot like this. All right, so once you've taped down your cable that's running from your speaker to your mixer, be sure to take the excess that you have and simply toss it underneath the table. Before you do that though, make sure you have it coiled up nicely. It always looks good if somebody walks behind your booth and the back side of your booth looks just as good as what's out in front. You don't wanna have a bunch of spaghetti wires hanging down underneath. It really looks unprofessional and if you're using a light underneath your facade, those cables that you have just tossed all willy-nilly can show through and make it look kind of tacky. That's it for the hardware side. Once you have these steps done, now it's time to put your facade around it and button everything up. I use a facade from a company called JMaz. They're a company, uh, I believe, that started out over China. Now they've got a home base here in the United States. I believe they're out of LA. Um, the first iterations of their products weren't that great, but now they've really seemed to improve the quality and have a small market share of the DJ lighting industry. I found that their DJ booths work out just as good. They're super lightweight and they have a Lycra front that you can take take off and wash should yours get dirty or get a drink spilt on it. I've been using this for over a year now and I've had pretty good luck with it. And that my friends is pretty much it. What you have here is a super simple, sleek, yet elegant DJ booth that's going to look good in 2018. Now what you can do is dress this up even further by putting speaker scrims on the speaker stands themselves. I always give my clients the option of whether they want to go with the scrim look or not just because sometimes it can make them look like big teepees and bring unwanted attention attention to the entire look. I'll go ahead and put those on there so you can see what they look like, but I would always say it's a good option to have some on hand. Especially if you have a super elegant event going on, they might add a touch of class, but me myself personally, I don't really care for them. But if you were to put them on there, they would look like this. Now, that looks a little better in some situations, but again, it's all user preference. What I do is I allow my bride or client to see a picture of both. Uh, that way they can kind of decide for themselves if they want the uh, more buttoned up scrim look. I kind of think they look like teepees though. That's just me. Uh, but I, if they want to go with that, that's no problem. I take them with me anyway. Or if they want to go with a more stripped down version without the scrims on the speaker stands. One thing that is a constant is the facade. The facade is always there. Now, if you're going to go with speaker stand scrims along with the facade, one thing that I will say is is try to have the materials match. You don't want this fabric to be black and have your uh, your speaker scrims to be white. I think it kind of looks tacky, a little bit of the tuxedo look. Uh, it isn't really my taste. Now, if you wanted to take this a step even further, what you could do is put some uplighting behind it. Now, one thing that I will say, most DJs, it seems like they take out uplights to light the facade every gig they go to. I only do it if the client has actually purchased uplights. I feel like once you start adding scrims, and up lights to your DJ booth, I feel it kind of makes it a little bit more about you rather than the client. If the client has already purchased up lights, the whole room is going to have a nice glow to it. If not, the only thing that's going to be glowing is your DJ booth and that kind of makes you stand out. If that's what you go for, no big deal. I'm not knocking you, but I will say the only time I up light my booth is when I have up lights in the venue. But now that we have this up, what we can do is throw a couple up lights behind it. Now to light up the
the scrims, we're going to use a standard RGB AW UV uplighting fixture. This is a battery powered fixture, so you don't have to worry about plugging anything in, especially when you're such a far distance away from your controller in some cases. Now that we've got our scrims lit up, now it's time to light up the facade. Now you could use the same uplights that you used to light the scrim to also light the facade, but as you can see, the uplights have a pretty narrow beam pattern, so I find that you get hot spots on the facade. What I like to use are bars, LED bars for the facade. That way you don't get any hot spots. Now, all of the lighting that I'm using to light my DJ setup is by a company called Rasha Professional. Now, they also started out overseas manufacturing, but they have since moved to the U.S. and they're starting to gain more and more traction. Um, they have offices in L.A. and also one in Nashville, so it works out for me. If I need to place an order, I can get something typically within uh, a couple days or so, but they're really great quality. These here are all metal RGB AW UV fixtures and they're pretty long. So two of these will light my facade. If you're looking to purchase some of these lights, what I'm going to do is leave their website in the description. Go to their store, uh, maybe give them a call, ask for Joe, tell them John or DJ Woopig sent you and uh, maybe they'll even hook you up with a discount deal. We're still working with them trying to get some, uh, some products for us to showcase here on the channel, but it should be coming soon. Until then, light them up. Now one thing I don't like to do is sell lighting during a daytime wedding just because as now you can't really tell that there's much light when the lights are on, especially during the daytime. It just I feel like the client wastes their money, but when the light goes out, it looks pretty great. Once you actually turn the lights off, everything seems to come to life. And this is even with some ambient light that's in my shop that always stays on and doesn't go off. Once you add in some effects lights or a monogram or something else, everything becomes much more dramatic. Your DJ booth simply has a glow to it. And, uh, the end result is pretty cool. And that's it for today. As you can see, we put together a pretty snazzy looking DJ booth that looks really elegant in the year 2018. Even going into 2019, there's not much you can do besides this at the very basic level to make it look better. Now you can use subwoofers with this. You can either put it in front of the facade or you can put the subwoofer pole where the speaker stands are and just do away with the scrims. That's typically what I do whenever I have the room. If you've got anything to add to today's video, or have some advice for the next guy, leave it down in the comment section below. If you want to personally ask me a question, shoot me an email, djwoopig at gmail.com, or you can find me on social media at djwoopig. As always, I ask, don't call me. <laughs> but that's it for today's video. We will be back with tomorrow. I don't know what we're going to do tomorrow. Maybe something different. Let's, we shall see. Uh, but until then, later.